If you want to see how well two sequences align with each other from their beginning to their ends, be it DNA or protein, you can use the needleman wunsch algorithm. So let's say that this is our scoring table, and that these are our two sequences. So this would be the algorithm showing the value for each cell in the table that we will build. So I also rewrote it with my own personal notation. So the value in the ith row and the jth column is going to be the highest or the maximum of one of the three. Either the value of the cell that is up and left of our current cell plus either a match or a mismatch, which is either plus one or minus one, or the value of the cell on top plus indel, or the value of the cell to the left plus indel. So this is how you initiate the table. You basically write those two dashes before each sequence and you add a zero in the top left corner. Then the first row and the first column are gonna be the easiest. So to do this cell, you basically only have one option. You can really go diagonally to the left up. You can go up, you can only go to the left. So you ask yourself, what is F of left arrow? Basically the value to the left. It's zero. And you add to that the score of an indel, which is minus one. So since this minus one corresponds to looking at the cell to the left, we're gonna draw an arrow to the left. Then we continue for the rest of the row using the same way, only being able to look at the left. And this is what you end up having. And you do the same thing for the first column, and this is what you get. And then you move on to the rest of the table. But it's important to note that your indel score might not be negative one, it might be negative two. So instead of having increments of minus one, minus two, minus three, you may have increments as shown here, minus two, minus four, minus six. So back to our table, in order to figure out the value of the cell here, we're gonna zoom in and see what is the maximum of the three possible values. So the first option is the value of the cell diagonal to this one plus a match, because we have an A and an A. Or we can look at the cell up top. The value of it is minus one. We're gonna add to it the score of an indel, which is minus one, and we get negative two. The value of the cell to the left is minus one. We add to that the score of an indel, which is minus one, we get also negative two. The maximum of these three values is one, so we're gonna write it in the current cell. We also draw an arrow from our current number, which is one, back to the cell that produced this one, which is zero. In case this max value is yielded not only from the diagonal cell, but also from the one up top, then we draw two arrows, one diagonally and one up. Onto the rest of the table, the value here would be the maximum of the three following values. The first one is the value diagonally up, which is minus one, plus a mismatch because we have an A and a T. The next option is the value to the left, which is one, plus an indel, which is minus one, so we get zero. And the last option is the cell up, plus an indel, which gives us minus three. The maximum of those is zero, so we write it and drag an arrow to the left because the one is the number that yielded this zero. Then after filling up the whole table, this is what we get. And according to our arrows, we draw a path from the bottom right corner to the top left corner. It's also possible to end up with more than one path if along the way we hit cells that have more than one arrow coming out of them. So our alignment score is the number in the bottom right corner, which in here is 2. And then we can start the actual alignment. So we start from the right side. Since the arrow coming out of the two is diagonal, we either have a match or a mismatch. So we write both nucleotides against each other. The next step is the number three, which also has a diagonal arrow, which means we will also write two nucleotides against each other. This time they match, so we write a line between them. The next number is a two with an arrow pointing up, which means we have an indel. In order to know if it's the top strand or the bottom strand that has the indel, you have to look at which strand doesn't have any progress made through it when you move along the arrow. So we go up the arrow, and in this strand we don't go upstream, we just stay in place. So therefore we write a dash 
instead of actually continuing and writing the next letter as we do in the bottom strand. Then we continue till the end and we get our total global alignment. And as a side note, if there were more than one path, we would also have more than one alignment.